Say we want to write a program that can play some turn-based game like chess. One aspect of this is the search algorithm, which is what allows the program to look ahead at possible future positions before deciding what move it wants to make in the current position. This white dot represents some position in our game with the white side to move. To keep things simple, let's say that in every position there are only two possible moves to choose between. We can visualize these moves as two separate branches, at the end of which are two new positions where it's now, of course, Black's turn to move. We can continue expanding the tree of moves until either we reach the end of the game or we decide to stop because going deeper would take too much time. Either way, at the end of the tree we now need to perform a static evaluation on these final positions. A static evaluation just means trying to estimate how good the position is for one side without making any more moves. For example, a crude approach in chess would be to add up the values of the remaining white pieces and subtract from that the values of all the remaining black pieces. So large values would favor white, while small values would favor black. For this reason, white is always trying to maximize the evaluation, while black is trying to minimize it. So let's start with these two positions on the bottom left. Say we evaluate them and they come out as minus one and plus three. Well, in the previous position, it was white's turn to move, and since white will of course choose the move that leads to the highest evaluation, we can assign this position a value of 3 as well. Next, let's evaluate these two positions, and so we get plus 5 and plus 1. Once again, from the previous position, white would pick the move leading to the highest evaluation, and so we can assign it a value of 5. We've now evaluated both the positions stemming from this position, where it's black's turn to move, Black will choose the move that leads to the lowest evaluation, and so we can assign this position a value of 3. I'll very quickly step through the other half of the tree. Say we evaluate these as minus 6 and minus 4, white will pick the minus 4. The next two positions are evaluated as 0 and 9, so white will pick the 9, and between minus 4 and 9, black will pick minus 4. At last we've arrived at the top of the tree where we can see that white should choose the move on the left, since that way even if black plays the best move, white will still get a plus 3 position. So now that the basic idea is hopefully clear, let's look at how this is implemented in code. We have a function called minimax, which takes in the current position, a depth for how many moves ahead we want to search, and a bool called maximizing player. We begin by checking if depth is equal to zero, or if the game is over in the current position, in which case we return the static evaluation of that position. Otherwise, if it's currently the turn of the maximizing player, which in our example means it's white to move, then we want to find the highest evaluation that can be obtained from this position. So we create a variable called max evaluation and initialize that to negative infinity. We then loop through all the children of the current position, and by children, I just mean the positions that can be reached in a single move. To find the evaluation of each child, we make a recursive call to the minimax function, passing in the child, depth minus one, and false, since it will now be the other player's turn to move. We can then set max eval equal to whichever is greater between the current max evaluation and the evaluation of the child position. Once we've evaluated all the children, we can return the maximum evaluation that we found. Now, we do essentially the same thing for the minimizing player, creating min eval set initially to positive infinity, and for each child position we call minimax, passing in the child depth minus one, and this time true. Min eval then gets set to whichever is smaller between the current minimum evaluation and the child evaluation, and finally we return the min evaluation. Let's step through this example again, this time with the code in front of us. First though, we'll need an initial call to the minimax algorithm to start things off. Okay, we're at the first position and we want to find the max of the two children, so we call minimax on the first child. It wants to find the min of its two children, so it calls minimax on its first child, which in turn wants to find the max of its two children, so it calls minimax on the first. At this point though, depth is equal to zero, so minimax returns the static evaluation of that position. This value gets passed up to the parent, which then calls minimax on its second child, receives the static evaluation from that, and returns the max between the two children. That value gets passed up to its parent, which now calls minimax on its second child. Minimax is called on its two children, getting their static evaluations, and the max is passed up to the parent, which passes the min of its two children up to its parent, which now calls minimax 
on its second child. I'll stop with the blow-by-blow -blow narration now, but hopefully it's quite clear how the algorithm uses recursion to search through the tree. Now that we've seen how plain Minimax works, let's run through this example yet again to look at how it can be sped up using pruning. These first few steps are the same as before, but consider the situation we have after evaluating this plus 5 position. Without yet evaluating the other position, we know that white can at least get a 5 from here, so we can mark this position as being greater than or equal to 5. We can now see that black won't go down this branch, because he already has a better option available. This observation means that we don't have to waste any computation on evaluating this final position, we can simply pretend it doesn't exist. In other words, we've pruned it from the tree. Things now continue as normal again for a few steps, until we get here. Black to play in this position will be choosing whichever of the two moves leads to the lowest evaluation, so we know the evaluation here is going to be less than or equal to minus 4. We can now be sure that white won't go down this branch because he already has a better option available to him, and so we can prune these positions. As you can see, the result of the search is exactly the same as before, we've just saved some time by not considering positions when they can't affect the outcome. Okay, I want to quickly go through a slightly deeper tree. I'll just fly through these first few steps because there's no pruning happening, so it's quite straightforward. In fact, it is actually kind of interesting that we've gone through half the tree and haven't been able to prune a single position yet. So pruning isn't guaranteed to occur, it very much depends on what order the moves are in. Ideally, the moves would be ordered from best to worst for the player whose turn it is in that position. For example, if these two moves had been the other way around, we would have been able to prune the second one. For this reason, it's usually a good idea to order the moves based on how likely they are to be good. For example, in chess, capturing a piece with a pawn is very likely to be a good move, and so it would be wise to explore it first. Anyway, let's continue with this tree. So this next position has been evaluated as plus one, and now I have a question. Do we need to evaluate the other position here, or can we prune it? If you're in the mood, I'd recommend pausing the video to figure this one out. So without evaluating the other position, we can say for sure that the previous position is less than or equal to one, since black is of course just going to choose whichever is lowest. This means that white will never go down this particular branch, because if the best he can hope for is a plus one, he'd rather just go the other way at the start, where he's guaranteed a plus three. So we can indeed prune that position. Alright, let's finish off this tree. Here we got a five and a two, so black would of course choose the two. That means this position is less than or equal to two, and so like before, white will never go down this branch since he can get a three by going the other way. This means that we can prune the rest of these positions. The tree is now complete, and we can see that with best play from both sides, the game will follow this path. Let's look at how this pruning stuff works in code. We'll start with our original minimax algorithm and add two parameters called alpha and beta, which will essentially be keeping track of the best score either side can achieve, assuming best play from the opponent. We'll need to update our recursive calls to minimax to pass in these two new values. Now, for the maximizing player, we'll set alpha to whichever is greater between alpha and the latest evaluation. Then, if beta is less than or equal to alpha, we'll break out of the loop. Similarly, for the minimizing player, we'll set beta equal to whichever is smaller between beta and the latest evaluation. And then once again, if beta is less than or equal to alpha, we'll break out of the loop. To better understand what's going on, let's step through the example one last time. In our initial call to minimax, we'll pass in negative infinity, which is the worst possible score for white, as our value for alpha, and positive infinity, the worst possible score for black, as the value for beta. These values get passed down until we reach our first end position. Here, negative one is greater than alpha, so the alpha value of the parent gets set to negative one. Three is then greater than negative one, so the alpha value gets updated once again. However, beta is not less than alpha here, so no pruning occurs. Next, in the parent position, beta gets set to 3, and this is passed down to its second child. After evaluating this plus 5 position, alpha gets set to plus 5, and now beta is less than alpha. Since in this position it's white to move, beta being less than alpha means that black had a better option available earlier on in the tree, and so we prune. Going back up the tree, alpha gets set to 3 in the first position, so we know white is guaranteed at least a 3, 
but we need to explore the other side of the tree to see if we can do better than that. So coming down here, neither negative 6 nor negative 4 are better options for white, so alpha doesn't change. In the parent position, beta now gets set to negative 4, which is less than alpha. Since this position is black to move, beta being less than alpha means that white had a better option available earlier on in the tree, and so once again we can prune. We've now completed the tree. So hopefully this video has made sense of the Minimax algorithm and how it can be sped up using this idea of pruning any branches that can't affect the outcome due to the fact that one side will prevent that branch from ever being reached as they have a better option available earlier in the tree. I'll leave you with the last few moves of this game, which was the first time a computer was able to defeat a reigning world champion in classical time controls.